Okay, let's have a look at keyboard mapping our own created letters. So I've created some letters and um, I've only done three, um, but you can just map a few letters in one collection and then add to that collection later. So um, depending on your time constraints. So if you've created them yourself, you might only have a few letters, but you can start a collection with those few letters. In theory, you could map anything to uh, a keyboard shortcut so I could map this square for instance but um, I'm not sure why you would do that but there may be um, glyphs or um, little tiny embroideries you want to keep with your alphabet and you might want to assign those to a keyboard shortcut so we'll have a look at that in the process. So um, as you can see, I've got three letters here. You may have also bought a font from a designer of the internet that comes as individual letter designs. So um, <clears throat> if you have done that and you've got a whole alphabet po plus possibly some glyphs and things, um, you may want to do that rather, rather do that in, in embroidery library because if you've got a whole collection, it's a bit easier there. Um, but we'll start in embroidery canvas with just these few letters. So you map, basically map one letter at a time and you need a collection for it. So I'm going to select the letter M. They suggest to use the uh, capital M as your size guide. Let me just have a look at the sizes of the others. That one's 70 millimetres high. What's the A? Uh, that's 71.59. Um, that is probably because of this border I've got around it. I might have started off with a 70 millimetre um letter but because I put a border of stem stitch around it, it it alters the height slightly it's not a big deal um, so long as you're happy with the letters next to each other at a reasonable height but just for interest sake I'm going to change the height for this one to 70 millimeters and incidentally an improvement in version 9 is that now when your lock is locked it's highlighted which is makes it a lot easier to see whether it's locked or not so um, I want it locked, so I'm going to change that to 70 millimetres as well and enter. And let's just check the T. <clears throat> yeah, that's a bit higher, so we'll make that 70 millimetres as well and enter. So now I know all my capital letters are exactly the same height. So I'm going to start with the letter M. Um, they suggest the M is a good one to use as your size and you'll see what I mean as I create it. So once you've got a letter selected and you can have other things on your um, in your window so you don't have to have a clean window with the letter M in it and then you can go to your keyboard design collection in your lettering and monogram toolbox. So there's the keyboard design collection tool so we left click on that and that will open a dialogue or a, a um, docker actually in your uh, to the right of your color film and if you've got the trial version or even when you get the new version if you haven't already mapped one it will all be blank and you need to click on new to create your new collection as I said you have to put these into a collection so let's click on new and I'm just going to call this one test and then it asks for a reference height. Now you can type that in um, or you can use the selection. So I have the letter M selected so I can just click on use selection and that will give me my reference height of 70 millimeters. And then down the bottom it's got character spacing as a percentage of the height and I have just left that at the default but depending on your font type um, you may want to test out when you type the letters to see if they're close enough or um, too far away and you might want to alter that slightly at some stage. Um, it's, it's a learning curve and so you know you will get a feel for how what percentage of the height it should be. 10% is fairly average. And then it asks for the recommended height range. Now um, this depends on the quality of the file that you've got. So grade A design, so these ones are 
digitized in the software um, so they're a grade A design and I can check that by looking down here at my um, little note down the bottom right hand corner of the software but if you've got a collection that has come with um, that you've purchased it's probably a stitch file so therefore it wouldn't be a grade A file now the grade A files you can adjust by 20% um, safely so you can put a range here 20 percent less than the 70 millimeters high and then 20 percent more than the 70 millimeters high but if you've got a stitch file then, then it's recommended you only adjust by 10 percent so i'm going to put a range of 20 percent in here because i've made my own letters and they're grade a files so i'll subtract 20 percent from 70 which gives me 54 millimeters and I'll add 20% to 70, which will give me 80, sorry, 56. I have to learn my maths. That should have been 56 millimetres. And add 14, which is 20% of 70 to 70, will give me 84 millimetres. So that's my recommended height range. Um, and that will show up in the... Um, lettering toolbox when we go to use our letters. Uh, incidentally, this character spacing, um, if that can also be overwritten in the lettering toolbox, and of course, you can adjust individual spacing with the edit tools in lettering. So it's 10% would be just go with the default 10% and it'll be fine. So we'll go OK. And so that has created our collection so any collections will be listed here so we'll have a drop down menu and only the one um, collection is here um, it will sh it shortens the name there which can be a bit confusing so make sure you give a really good name to your collection so that you can differentiate it for instance it's just showing a t here um, so and the name is test although it does show up here with the name so um, there will be in the full version you will have of course the inbuilt free um, collections that are going to come with the software they will be listed here as well so once your correct one is selected here then it's a matter of mapping your letter so you come down to um, where you're going to map and i'd already done this so the the letter M is selected here. You need to select where you want to map it to, basically. So we can filter here, and I filtered by uppercase letters because I'm doing uppercase. But we've got standard characters, um, extended characters, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and numbers. So we've got those choices to shortcut our scrolling here to find which letter we want to map it to. So I'm happy with the uppercase letters and I want to map it to the letter M and that will show up here um, that I'm mapping it to the le capital letter M. And then all I have to do is click the word map and it will appear in here. So I can go ahead and do those, the other letters now. So I can select this letter the A and I want to find the letter A in my uppercase letters and there it is and I map that and the letter T of course will be down here so I need to select it first tell it where I want to map it to and hit the word map so I've got those three mapped in there now. And so I now have that collection of three letters. And as I said, you can go ahead and map other letters individually like that. Now, if oh, I won't go into mapping in embroidery in um, embroidery library for the full collections in this video, but um, the principles are very similar, but you can, uh, you have to order your letters um, in your window correctly so I'll do that in another video um, but now that collection is there I can close that dialog oh just while I'm here you can um, remove mapping so if you want to select one of these letters and take it out for some reason either to replace it with another one or something like that you can remove the mapping 
and you can adjust the position of the baseline and spacing. Let's just click on that for instance. So um, the spacing is measured obviously it's giving you an indication here. The baseline is on the base of the letters. Um, so you could adjust that to go through the middle of the letters if you needed to for some reason. Um, and your spacing, it's showing the outer extremities of the letters. So if you wanted to add some more spacing in there, you could do that. Um, a bit more breathing space around the letters. So you've got the, a few little um, fine tuning options there. We'll just go OK with the defaults. Once you've used it for a while, you will um, be able to um, play around with it a bit more when you get used to it. OK, so we've got that there. So as I said, I can now close that keyboard design collection dialog. And I can actually now go into my lettering. Um, if I right click on the lettering toolbox, I have now got keyboard design collection option here in my type of um, letters that I, uh, uh, fonts that I want to see. So if I left click on that, I've only got the one and it's showing up here. Um, and so it's called test. It's the one I just made. I can make it between 56 and 84 millimeters and it's giving me a little image of the letter there as well. So I can put in my lettering here and I can go M A. Uh, because I've typed lowercase, nothing's going to come up. I need to make sure I type uppercase because that's what I mapped them to. So I'll just put in uppercase M-A-T. And as I said, you can change your um, spacing, letter spacing. So at the moment, um, it's 1.4 millimeters. And you've got all the normal adjustments there that you can make to this font. And I'm just going to go apply and OK. And I just need to click where I want to write that. So I'll left click and there is my lettering. Now, as you can see with this particular font, the A and the T look really close together and the, uh, sorry, the A and the M look really close together and the T's further apart. So that's where you would apply your uh, manual editing to bring your T a bit closer over. Now the um, keyboard design collection fonts will also show up in the monogramming tool, but they don't work quite the same in the monogramming tool. So you need to, um, there's a few things to learn about that. And I'll also do that in a separate video. So something to look forward to when we can finally get our hands on the version nine full version.